Yeah, shut a fire all boat dog Every corner, crevice and corner Shut a fire Hear this, hear this, hear this Hear this, hear this Hear that? I see it here, I saw it in a dog My View TV, the people's platform, the home of undiluted news, reviews, updates, and your daily dose of entertainment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything where you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple me. What well, well, people? Hope everybody in okay, hope everybody in all right. God's plan is always the best. Sometimes the process is painful and hard, but don't forget that when God is silent, he's doing something great for you. Well, I'm a bit, they don't me, I just some little germs. Not my fault why somebody don't believe in the creator. But if you don't believe in the creator, don't come on the platform and cause the people to move down. You understand? All you need for do, Keep on the hand in on the pocket and don't write nothing. You understand? Keep on the thoughts to yourself. But hold on now, people. Well, if I think still I go on the news, so we can just jump right tonight. Woman hit man with car charged with attempted murder. Here we go on, power we go on now, people. 33 year old Van Seeker John Lee of Kingston 80 scheduled to face the court to answer the charges of attempted murder after she hit a man with her motor car on Constance Road, Kingston 10 in November 2021. Report from the Average Police Station that about 2 p.m. the complainant was attacked by John Lee, who used her BMW motor car to hit him and subsequently uttered threats to kill him. The police were summoned and the complainant was taken to the hospital where he was admitted. An investigation was launched and the accused was arrested during an operation on Friday, July 29, the police said. She was subsequently charged after a question and answer interview conducted in the presence of her attorney. I slap on this little classes, girl. You understand? But because it's with a friend, people, them, me could not slap away. Anyway, right out of St. Thomas. Search continue for missing St. Thomas Fisherman. Two man go see and they miss the people, you understand? Me know send a better life than gang and look at 80. No, 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 no. Just look like they're missing. The search continued for two fishermen who went missing off the coast of Yalas Fishing Beach in St. Thomas on Sunday. Imran Khan Lewis, age 36, and Franklin Campbell, age 50, left for a fishing trip at about 7 a.m. and were due to return the same day. The Marine Police told our news team that officers carried out an extensive search of the coast of Yalas and White Horse on Monday but saw no sign of the men. Yes, people. And the jury left them out there to a search as well as some other little man. They feed them little canoe. Yeah. Yeah, be honest with them. But look like they're missing. Here we are going from where we are now. Search for them. We can't find them. So we're coming back. We were supposed to, we were supposed to go there and search. JD. So we just hope and pray them alive. Send me up. End up in some country where we can't find them. You see it. So we, everybody all goes out. You know? Because we're going to push them on. When I see them come home back. We think they're the next country. We think they can get some collection. Some call and so on, you know? So, we are open for you, said we. We know she's not there, see? So, the more there. Things nobody now go tell you, no. I'm not sure me I go tell you, no. Pray for the best, but hope for the worst. Maybe, just maybe, one of these days you're going to see if you catch fish, and the fish you're going to catch, and that fish that didn't have them. But anyway, the can move on to the news. Police identify gang violence as possible motive for Maxine Avenue double murder. Yes, people. Which part of stage, man? And him friend then, yes man, that's what the police said. The police are saying young violence may be at the heart of the killing of the two in Maxfield Avenue in St. Andrew. The two were shot and killed on Emancipation Day at around midnight. Seen a 2 point ten for St. Andrew South Kirk Ricketts say until the completion of investigation into the incident, they are unable to definitely put forward a motive. But we'll land now. We don't want to feel like me and make up the story. Kirk, come come talk to you people. Well, at this time, I am unable to, to point to a motive. I can, however, attribute the incident uh, which occurred in an area known to have gang-type violence and the fact that 
the, the men were killed with the use of a firearm or firearms, that it is quite likely that, you know, this could be gang related. Well, we're, we're, we're seeing, um, you know, information in social media about the perceived orientation of the victims. Uh, at this stage, our investigation is still in its embryonic stage, and um, I'm awaiting my detectives to, to give me, uh, you know, so much more, more concrete details. So that was Kirk Crickets. Keep back and listen to police corruption now. Policeman being sought over disappearance of money in robbery case. Yes, people. A detective constable is under investigation in connection with disappearance of 800,000, which was evidence in a case of robbery before the Anova Parish Court law enforcement source has disclosed. The robbery case ended with a guilty plea by the constable who was investigating. Officer failed to hand over the cash so it could be returned to the victim of the robbery sources claim. Yes, people. Let me attend to the police, Mate. But no funny if you like see a joke me I make. See then now. Everything I come to the forefront. You understand? Seeing a police officer in the Anova have confirmed that the report was made to the Inspectorate and Professional Standard Oversight Bureau of the Police Force, which is the leading the investigation. According to the source, the allegation came to the attention of the police mass after the judge who presided over the robbery case wrote to them seeking their intervention to have the money produced in court. Constable is being sought by investigation for questioning. Here we are. Constable of come, come tell some lie. You understand? They better give the people their money or slap. If you get slapped with your dirty germs, boy. What lie that bit there now? Commissioner Lee Mount, that's why I'm going to put him around. That's a cab. You know, say, we're not too likely to not know him after saying no. The man in front of you ain't know nothing yet. You understand? But here we are going to go on now. Over the last six weeks, there has been a series of interpersonal murders that have shocked the society. Apart from the one we mentioned above, we have also seen a number of gang conflicts that have resulted in multiple killings. Following the murder of 31-year-old Kamisha Wright and her four children who were buried on the weekend, we saw just days later, on July the 4th, where a man used a knife and murdered his bedridden wife, also in Clarendon. We saw in St. Anne a dispute between two persons at a restaurant resulting in one person stabbing another to death. Also in St. Anne, three persons succumbed to wounds that were inflicted during what appears at this time to be a family dispute. Although suspects may be charged, families and communities are still left to grieve. So I'm asking that people report cases of disputes before they escalate into violence. Services, including our domestic violence intervention centers, are available to people, and I encourage persons to utilize these services. We're also seeing a number of cases where people are being killed and their bodies buried or disposed of, as was the case in Kingston Western, where the dismembered bodies of four persons were removed from shallow graves. These are just some of the cases that have influenced the 4% increase we are now seeing. And these are the matters that we will be dealing with um, over the next weeks and months. Shootings continue to show a downward trend with 8% fewer incidents this year than in 2021. Rape is down 16%, robbery is up 10.5% and break-in is up 3%. The increase in robberies and break-in is of particular concern as life gets back to pre-COVID normalcy. As a response, we have made adjustment to personnel in various divisions. Additional mobility assets are being acquired and will be deployed over the next few weeks. And another team of quick response motorcyclists will be deployed by the end of August. And also, divisional commanders have been instructed to review their anti-robbery strategies in light of these changes. We'll continue to provide updates to Donna Lee's mother and the rest of the family as the case progresses. I believe it is also appropriate that I highlight the challenges we face when conducting an investigation in an atmosphere where fake news abounds. When I use the term, I'm not referring to news with, inac with inaccuracy. I'm referring to fabricated and misleading stories in relation to an investigation. Every time these fabrications are published, 
They not only divert the attention of the police, but they further traumatize the grieving family and loved ones and enrage the genuinely concerned. It begs the question, whose agenda does this serve? These fake news elements do not serve the interests of the family. They don't serve the interests of law enforcement and they do not serve the interests of justice. When fake news muddies the water and causes people to lose faith in the integrity of the judicial process, it only benefits the guilty.